Welcome to Loyal TV from your always loyal concierge. Today we have a feast for the eyes, as well as, well, a real feast. It's a more than complete meal that was ordered up by our state's 41st legislature through House Resolution 1083. A sizable selection reflecting Oklahoma's historic agriculture and cultural backgrounds. In 1988, the state legislature decided that they needed to turn their attention to the state meal of Oklahoma, and Oklahoma was the first state to do so. I think that the legislature was both looking at this as a way to possibly increase commerce or bring some notoriety to the state, but it was also indicative of some of the food attitudes at the time. Think back to the 1980s ad campaigns for fast food restaurants, they started to add things like California versions, the California Club, which just meant, you know, throw an avocado on it. And it's very possible that that legislature was looking to establish that it's okay to be Oklahoman, to identify the food attitudes and behaviors of Oklahomans as something that we wanted to establish uh, and traditionalize. So I think that what they were, they were efforting to do was to come up with something that said who Oklahomans are based on what they eat, so I think the 41st legislature was interested in uh, establishing Oklahoma food tradition in that sense. Oklahoma Stick Mill is really more of what you might establish as a, a potluck in the fellowship hall of your local gathering place for worship. It's inclusive of three main courses, chicken fried steak, barbecued pork, biscuits and gravy with, with sausage, as well as a number of vegetable dishes, corn on the cob, fried okra, squash, whatever preparation you choose, black-eyed peas, probably flavored with some ham hock or bacon, as well as a couple of options for dessert, the state fruit of strawberries and a uh, pecan pie as well, and a bread choice, cornbread is the state choice for that. What I would say about the origins of most of the elements of this meal is that they, they tend to have more influence from the south and to the east of Oklahoma. Some of these are global foods, black-eyed peas and okra, both come from Africa originally and, and have really moved all around the entire world. But they grow well in the South and in the heat. Uh, they're incorporated into a lot of Southern dishes as well as soul food. And so those dishes are really part of the Oklahoma State Meal because, because we are at the crossroads of America. There's a lot of different influences from all over. Corn comes from Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska. Okra, Texas is a, a big producer of, of okra. Strawberries, about 80% of those come from, from California. Dawson County, Texas, there's a town there that claims to have invented the chicken fried steak. But when you think about something like a cutlet of meat that maybe is a little too tough for certain types of preparation. So you take that, that piece of meat, cube steak in this case, and you pound it out and you flour it and deep fry it. And you're rendering down the fats in that meat. You're making the connective tissue softer. So you're making the texture of that cut much more enjoyable, and then also adding flavor with your seasoned flour, putting maybe a cream gravy on, on top of that. At its root, food is life-sustaining, and we share food with those who we, we want to see good things for. So it's an act of giving, it's an act of love. Sharing meals together has long been a way for people from different communities to express a desire to cooperate, for people within a community to express love of that sense of, of family and community that they have. And so that, that, that is so ingrained in us because we all know that we're social creatures and that we require that interaction to be healthy. And sharing meals is one of the most formative ways that we do that. Join us again for more appetizing Oklahoma stories you've never heard before. Your table is always ready, right here on Loyal TV.